was never the one to write up a song for just anyone. I I was always the one to find myself lost in all conversations. Oh, 'cause I've always been told that things will unfold if you keep on waiting. But then you came along and proved me all wrong. I was so mistaken. 'Cause you glue all the pieces back together. Yeah, you you take all my wrongs and make them better. Yeah, you. You're making me wanna try forever, and I feel so free, oh my sweet baby. I was never the one to give up the ghost. No, I was so stuck. I kept on playing my part, wanting to give up 'cause nothing was changing. But with you it's so clear, and now that you're here, I see colors in every spectrum. Guess I finally learned my lesson. That was fun. Rachel always makes me promise to be safe when I do things like that with heavy equipment, and of course, I'm super safe. So we just unloaded three tons of feed: chicken feed, pig feed, and、uh, like all flock feed. It's a lot of work. And actually, one of the questions we get all the time from our family and friends and peers is like, "Is that homesteading life you're living? Is it even worth it? You know, is it is it worth the time? How do you do it all? When do you sleep? How do you butcher animals?" And, and a lot of people also say, "I would love to do that. I just don't feel like I can do it." Or I don't have the time, or that's beyond me, or I don't have the money. And you know, first of all, we choose this life because we love it. We we love doing what we do. Our whole purpose here on YouTube is to show you guys a reasonable way to raise your own food. And so today's video, I want to kind of explore why we do these things. It's totally worth it, and I'll explain why. Uh, this is non-GMO feed. You can see, like the actual pieces of food in there.、Uh, this is the only way that we can feed our animals the good stuff and have it reasonably priced. A bag, a 50-pound bag of this, costs like 40 bucks at、uh, our feed store. So we have to get this stuff hauled in. So that we can raise our food and our animals with the best food that we can provide, and still not break the bank. And、uh, we have a visitor today, my brother's kids. Say hi, Kate. That's Dad, Kate. Scoop. This Kate's got the scoop. What are we gonna do? Feed the pigs. Feed the pigs. That's right. You ready? Okay, let's get some food. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Kate's gonna fill up your bucket with the scoop. Okay. Oh yeah. It's gonna get a little heavy. Okay.、Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Let's just bring another bucket. That's not gonna. That's an. That's enough、Uncle、for one pig. What's up, buddy? Oh, bucket, Kate. Oh, bucket. Uh, you you got it, buddy. I don't know what you just said. So one thing when we first started planning our homestead, we only wanted animals that the kids can handle, that were hardy, good mothers, multi-purpose, and we looked for breeds of things like our sheep that we didn't have to shear. We want to make sure that we didn't have to put in extra effort where we didn't want to put it. Different animals can be kind or not. <laughs> They could have better demeanors. They could be easier to work with, and so we wanted to make sure that we never had a fear to have kid visitors on our farm because we had aggressive animals.
Okay, so today is move the pig day. Um, you can see it's getting pretty barren there. We probably waited a little bit too long, um, but uh, you know, chores aren't too bad on the farm. Every once in a while, we have to get all of our efforts together for a few minutes and do something like move the animals, but uh, electric fencing has made that really, really easy. We got the pig food, we'll lay that out where we want them to be, and then we'll move the electric fence around them. It's easy as that. One of the reasons why we love this homestead life is because it forces us to kind of work as a team. Teamwork makes the dream work. Huh, babe? What? Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> Many hands make light work. Many hands make light work. That is true. Okay. Look there, at that. look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that is the biggest swallow for just... them ever. Around here? Yeah, what if we just like made, made this like whole yeah. area just like a wall? <laughs> <laughs> Look how happy they are. Yeah. He's pretty nice. Say hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> These are our meat birds and one thing that we decided when we we're going to get land is that we're going to raise our own meat. We had a problem with the humaneness of how meat that we would get at the store was raised. And so we decided that we're going to do some DIY stuff, make things like chicken tractors, have chickens and eventually butcher them. It took a lot of like mental like exercise to get to the point, but we had to make a decision. We had to make a commitment to it. You cannot buy the quality that you raise on your own property. And it's not just about eating them. It's about what they do for your land. And in between raising them, they get to change your landscape of your homestead. So. We have chickens for eggs and we have chickens for meat. Is it the easiest thing that we've ever done? No. Is it the best thing we've ever done? 
that's close. The relationship with our food has like increased like 10 times and so is it easier? Nope. Is it worth it? Yeah. Is it worth it? Another pretty cool thing about the chickens following the pigs is that any little scraps of grain or whatever that the pigs missed, the chickens will get. Speaking of chickens, we're gonna show you right now the funnest way to feed chickens. It doesn't get better than this. Fill her up, buddy. All right, fill her up. Okay, ready? Yep. Let's go make those chickens happy. Heck yeah. Heavy? A bit. <laughs> that holds 25 pounds. All right. I'm getting my workout for today. Heck Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Much more fun than um, just chucking scratch around. I mean, not gonna lie, it feels like I'm moving a machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> like a Gatlin gun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever that is. Can you hear her? She's like, come milk me. I need to be milked. If you don't know, goat. That is what she's saying. Hey! I know, huh? Alright, so we're a little late this morning to getting to getting the milking done. But that's just fine. I'm going to milk her morning and night. Um, just because I kind of want to increase that milk supply. Some people have asked, like, is it all worth it? Like, I'm going to put her up on the stand because she's waiting for grain. So hold on. So is it worth it? Yes. Um, is it hard work? Yeah, <laughs> you you know it is. I think you just have to figure out what is good for you, what is good for your family, what can you handle that's not gonna stress you out and um, decide is that worth it for you? Because for us, this is worth it. We love to make the cheeses. The cheeses, you guys, are so amazing. Goat cheese. Oh, it's so good. It's so easy to make too. Man, fresh raw goat milk, we put it in a pancake, put it into Indian food. Like there's so many things you can do with it. Just having it on hand. Yes, it's a chore. Um, there are some days where honestly, I'm just like, oh man, I forgot to milk the goat. And it's like super late. Um, I'm tired. I wanna go to bed. Kind of ties you down. You kind of have to be committed if you're gonna go ahead and choose that kind of course you know, if you're gonna get goats or whatever. But ultimately, would I say it's worth it? Yeah. Um, these are things that we consider are, are valuable to our homestead. You can't take just one person's advice for it. You can take pieces of people's information and pick from them and decide, hey, what is good for me? What is good for my family? And that's what we decided to do. But here's the question. Are you willing to sacrifice I think that's what it comes down to with like the many decisions we have in our life, right? Whether it's to homesteading or whether it's to marriage or whether it's to, you know, uh, raising your kids, uh, making choices in your life, basically. Like, 
What are you willing to sacrifice for it? We love this way of living. There, there's a peace here, a peace that is found that you can't find anywhere else. Working with the land and working with the animals, being that steward is something that is worth it to us. So all of this feels worth it. Yes, it's hard. Yes, you have bad days. I am not gonna sugarcoat it because in farming and in homesteading, there are a lot of things that are out of your control. Like uh, we're working with the weather to flower farm and man, we just got a cold snap that took out a couple trays of my seed starts. So we're back at square one. We're starting things over. Good thing we succession plant. I just wanted to say that like that's my two cents is is the sacrifice worth it to you ultimately you have to find what's right for you and you guys just a quick note on the goat front we're actually downsizing our herd so i have a friend who is really interested into in our goats and she's actually going to be um, taking some of these guys off my hand i just want to do dairy i have come to the realization that I just want to do something that's manageable. When we do have CC and milk, like this is gonna be a lot of milk. So um, I'm getting rid of, so we're sending these lovely gals to a new home. We're even taking licorice, he's our weather. He's super sweet, he's very cuddly, but he's gonna be going to a new home as well. So we've got one, two, three, and then Pepper up there, chewing in the front. And then little Coco, she was from our last, uh, our last year's kidding. And I think that's pretty much it, like all five goats. One, two, three, four, five. This has come to the point where we need them to have a new home and I just want to keep two goats in milk. Um, I'm gonna see how this little white goat, like how her udders are, um, see if she's easy to milk. Otherwise, I'll probably end up selling her too. But I couldn't sell her because it was Dot and the kids really wanted her because of the whole fiasco that happened with the goats and losing all the babies. And so I kind of have to keep her. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take this in and strain it. And pff, look at this, goodness gracious. Little Dot keeps sneaking out of the fence. Dot, get back in there. Don't make this a habit. Now, look at you. <laughs> Come on. Thank you. Lily, why are the ducks in the backyard? Why? Why didn't you let them out? Did they sneak back in? I know, huh? Okay guys, so to sum up, we're, we're like in a nutshell, do we love this life? Yes. Do we hate it sometimes? Also, yes. Are we perfect? Definitely not. <laughs> we kill plants, we make mistakes, uh, our animals get sick, sometimes they die. <sighs> we plant late, we feed the wrong feed sometimes, but will we trade this for something else no no what would we trade it for we are doing this for our kids and for us we want to raise our own food we want to raise our kids on an open space in a relatively quiet but that's not even true because the sheep <laughs> and the roosters are so freaking loud <laughs> it's just a different kind of quiet once they're fed look it's nice because everybody's fed right now so it's it's good. We're also about to get 0.7 inches of rain, which seems like a ton to us here in Northern <laughs> California. So I've got, I've got the cover crop, cover crop, cover crop bag on. I'm gonna seed the bare spots out here. And uh, you guys, we appreciate you being part of our channel. We appreciate you so much. We hope you learned something today. We hope you laughed. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not, and uh, click that notification bell so you know every single time 
we're coming out with a new video. You guys, your comments and your likes, they really help grow our channel and they really make us feel good inside. Uh, thanks for 10K, BTW. Oh my gosh. Holy cannoli. Thank you for Hello? 10K. <laughs> it's so funny because like, <laughs> We don't know when we're supposed to hit these like landmarks and stuff like that. And so, gosh, we're so grateful that we're there. I mean, it, it's that's something that we never thought. Like really, we don't know how to gauge when we're supposed to be at 10K or 100K. The kids did ask what play button we get at 10K <laughs> and I don't, I don't think we get one at 10K. So we gotta go a little bit further than where we're at. So yeah, gosh, thank you guys so much for getting us there. We got to work on a thank you, some kind of giveaway. We're so grateful and we want to give you guys back something. So we'll work on a, a giveaway, maybe a live giveaway or something like that. Cause you know how much I love lives. Rachel loves lives. Maybe you have to be a subscriber in order for it to be a giveaway. <laughs> yeah, Cause we can do just subscriber lives. So yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, we, will, we will plan on that um, in the near future. We love you guys. We really, really do appreciate the kind comments and you guys supporting, especially the kids. They work so hard and I work kind of hard. Rachel works really, really hard. And uh, we just, I don't know. We're just so grateful. We never thought we'd be at this point in homesteading or YouTubing or social media. Um, it just blows our mind. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We really appreciate it.